Hello there, well I'm Dave Dickens and welcome to my workshop and if you're new to this channel let me just explain what this current series is about. Now a while ago um, I thought it was time that I gave my bass guitar, one that I built right early on in my uh, adventures in guitar building, a bit of TLC. There was a few rattles on the string, the action wasn't very good and I'd put a, the pickup in the wrong place. I wanted to uh, add a new pickup nearer to the neck. Now eight weeks later and oops let's get going hello and welcome to episode eight of my adventure in making over a, a bass guitar or completely rebuilding a bass guitar Anyway, in the last episode, I cut out this little mermaid from aluminium. And um, you may remember that uh, I couldn't cut out the, the sections in her arms because um, I didn't have a tool small enough to, uh, to deal with that. Well, since then, I've invested in a jeweler's saw. I um, actually got it from Amazon for about £11.95 UK pounds which um, I thought was quite a, a bargain. Anyway, um, so today I'm going to have a go at cutting those little triangles out. But something's been bothering me. Now you may remember I cut this body in half so that I could feed it through my thicknesser to thin it down a bit and take some of the weight out and also enable me to put a new top on it. Now then, in cutting it out, Obviously, I was taking some material out of the middle, the thickness of the bandsaw for a start, and also about a couple of millimetres where I had to plane it to get it to, to butt up. And of course, that's narrowed this down. Now, somebody, or a few folk at the time, said they thought I would have put a veneer in to uh, compensate for the fact that I'd sawed the middle out. And I thought, well, no, I don't need to bother with that. But it's played on my mind and I'm just worried that I'm gonna have trouble when I try and fit the neck. So I've decided I'm gonna cut the guitar in half again. But this time I will put not only a veneer, but a strip of maple in the middle. So it's gonna be a strip of maple with some nice dark wood veneer on either side. And I think, apart from making the thing wider again, I think it's going to make the back look quite attractive. So that's my first job today. Apologise, you can hear the neighbour mowing his lawn next door. Anyway, I'm going to mark down the centre line. I know I've got the join there, but I'm just going to emphasise it with a pencil. I'm going to do it on the small band saw. I might regret this, but I've got a very thin blade on that, and um, hopefully it won't take too much out, and it won't make too many teeth marks. Well, that looks all right. Now, according to the plans that I drew up for this guitar, uh, all those years ago, it should be 332 at the widest point. So let's just stretch that out to 332. About there. Looks about right. So that would give me uh, that looks like a, uh, oh gosh, that's either six or seven mil gap. Now then, let's also have a look at the uh, fretboard. That's going to come into there. Two, 
Do you know what? I'm, I'm tempted to go for a 10 mil gap. Of course, I made myself a, a template, a neck template, which uh, goes right down to the bridge. Um, so this should help me in uh, working out how thick this should be. I'm, I'm fussing around this a bit because I'm going to attach the neck with a bolt like I do on the uh, travel guitars that I make, a single bolt. And I just think that I might need material on both sides of the neck in order to give it the strength that I need, especially with a bass guitar. Which is why I'm sort of worried about cutting it, making it too narrow. If I can just leave a little bit on each side, I think it's going to give it a little bit more strength. Uh, which is why I think going slightly wider is going to work. Okay, so this piece of wood is about 14 mil thick. So I'm going to uh, oops, run it through the thicknesser. So let's get that out. Really useful having everything on wheels. I think I'm going to have to sharpen the blades on that thicknesser. It's always a fun job. Anyway, so I've got that down to 12 mil. Now this is less than a mil thick, this veneer, so uh, I've not really counted for that. But um, I think that's going to look all right. Need to cut this down to size. So I think I'm just going to mark it on the top there. Just take that off. So what are we looking at here? Let's measure that. Oh, it's about 30 mil. I'm just going to use a levelling beam to get that nice and flat. Unfortunately, this is going to need a bit more work. Okay, I think that's going to be all right once that's glued and clamped. Okay, I was going to cut some strips of veneer. Okay, so I'm going to cut this to about 32 mil. Okay, right then. I think I'm going to get some tissue paper to put down there. I'll put the smooth edge down. 
got a bit of snipe from the thicknesser on this wood so I'll, I'll mount it in the center and then just trim it off put one piece of that there oh, got dust on it that's no good one piece there cut that up okay I think I'm ready to glue this up together again I think that's going to be okay. I, I can see a few little bits that I'm going to have to fill with some dust and glue, but in general that looks pretty good. So, leave that to cure. Hey, don't forget, if you'd like to follow along with all this madness, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's uh, great to have you along. Now then, while that body is curing again, let's sort out this scarf joint. I need to trim this flush and I do that on the bandsaw. Before I head to the bandsaw, I need to stick this little template onto the back of the neck to give me the, the right angle to cut across. So uh, let's stick that on there. Put a little bit of super glue there and put, on there. Press that. put the lid on, multitasking. Okay, so the aim of the game here is to cut off um, some of the material, but not all of it. Uh, and the rest of the material will be shaved off using the thicknesser. Okay, so <laughs> I've had one of those Dave moments, haven't I? I'm cutting through there and I'm thinking, this isn't right, Dave, you're cutting this wrong. You're cutting this all wrong. And sure enough, I was cutting it wrong. I'm following the angle down. I should be cutting it straight across. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's see what we can do. Now then, I know you like watching this channel for the mistakes that I make. Okay, so the reason why that template didn't fit properly was it should never have been stuck on there because what I needed to do was stick a block of wood just behind the neck, put the neck on there flush and then cut it across. So that's what I'm going to do and then we'll see what damage I've done to the rest of it. See if I can pull this back from the brink. You'd be surprised how many mistakes I make. Now actually you probably wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, um, let's see what we can do. 
my neck. Neck holder is probably not wide enough for this thick neck. Oh, come on, can you get in there? Yes, as long as that goes in there and it doesn't rub on there, we should be okay. As long as that can go down flush, that's the important thing. Okay, so I'm gonna run this through the thicknesser and we're gonna have a bit of a problem because I've cut through into there. But uh, let's do that first and then we'll see. Tempted, I'm very tempted, just to get the plane out and do it manually. Do it by hand. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's do it by hand. Right, now I've just had a cup of tea and, well, the world is a better place after a cup of tea, isn't it? And I've got an idea. Now, there's no getting around it. I've cut a slot in the headstock where there shouldn't be a slot. But now then, I think this presents us with an opportunity. See, the other day I was in a, a DIY store and I spotted this piece of aluminium and, uh, well, when I spot these sorts of things, I do like to uh, grab hold of them. And, um, well, why don't I glue that aluminium into that slot? There's a feature and uh, well we can call it a strengthener can't we really I mean it uh, this may be a new invention for strengthening a headstock well look it's worth a go and of course my little mermaid is uh, going to be made of aluminium so uh, it sort of keeps it all in the family doesn't it there we go so let's mark where I need to cut this. I should do it. Okay, I've uh, shaped that. So that will just slide into there. Now then, obviously I've got to be careful now. I can't plane with that aluminium in there, but I do need to plane it down a little bit more. So before I glue that in, what I'm going to do is fit this off cut in there, which I think will slide right down inside. Yes, I'll plane that flush and then uh, glue that aluminium in. There you go. That looks pretty good. I think that's good enough for me to glue that all down. Okay. Now obviously because I've planed this down now, that aluminium is sticking a little bit proud. But I think, if I think I'll glue it down first, and then when once that's set, then I'll use a, um, a file just to take that off. But uh, otherwise, I think we're okay with that. I need to just squeeze that really tight onto there. Smash in, right, I'm gonna take it off here and get ready for gluing. Now, hold on a second, stop Dave, before another Dave moment comes in here, because think about this, because what do we need to put in the middle there? We need to put a truss rod in there, David. Right, okay, so. The sensible thing to do would be to create a slot in the middle there so that I don't ruin my router blade when I do the truss rod slot. In fact, let's get the truss rod. Here we have it. So going to come through up to there okay. 
that's going to go to there. Yep, I need to actually cut this out right down to the end there. Okay, there we are. Well, hopefully that's another disaster narrowly averted. Let's just bung that into there. I think that looks okay. That's going to go down the middle. Good. Okay, I think we're ready to glue now. Let's move that out. I'm going to glue it in with some of this uh, Gorilla Glue. I think it's going to hold it okay. Let's sort of spread it on both sides. And let's see if we can get it in there without losing all the glue. Unfortunately, these tissues are really useless. Right. Okay. Just need to clamp that really tight. squeezing out that side which is good and glue coming out that side that's another one of these on should I do it the other way around that looks pretty good and that looks good Hey, you never know, a few years time, they'll be saying, oh, that's the uh, headstock strengthener that that guy invented. <laughs> so what's next? Well, I think a quick tidy up and then I'm gonna try and tackle that mermaid. Right, so here we have my new jeweler's saw. That is one really fine blade. And uh, it's a bit floppy at the moment. Now then, I've had a practice. Okay, I hope you can see that. I drilled a 1.5 mil hole in the middle and then I used this saw to cut out a sort of a triangle in there. So that seemed to work okay. So now all I've got to do is repeat that process on the mermaid. I've loaded up a one mil drill bit in the uh, Dremel. I'm gonna make a hole in the center of those two triangles. Uh, there we go, push that down. Okay, here we go. Helps to switch it on. Ooh, that's a, an 
amazing saw that, but incredibly fiddly. Let me show you. So I've done that one, just need to do the other one now. Flip her over. Wow, okay, let's do the next one. Yeah, I'm pleased with that. So uh, let me flip it over. You can see it on the back. There we have it. Okay, so I'm going to peel this uh, paper off and uh, polish her up. I did have a slight hiccup when I was cutting her out originally, filing her in that it bent slightly at the end. And so um, when I'm sanding it now, I'm missing a bit. So gonna have to do a bit more sanding to get that smooth I quite like the uh, brushed aluminium look I've been rubbing it with 240 uh, grit this is 400 grit I think I'll go over it with 400 grit but that's I think that looks rather nice My goodness me, what an amazing tool. I just love it when you, you, you get a, a tool like this that just opens up a whole world of possibilities and that, that is absolutely incredible. Fantastic. Okay, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. X marks the spot. Right. Oh, that's handy. Yeah, I rather like that. I mean, I did wonder about sort of, you know, laying her down a bit. But silly, isn't it? It's going to go over the uh, the frets there. Why not just put her in the middle like that? I'm also going to put some tape over this spot because I'm going to be gluing the mermaid down. Let's just mark that line there. Okay. And, uh, just find the centre of the mermaid. Okay, I apologise, you've got her upside down. Seven mil there. About six mil there. So she's a bit higher, a bit higher up. So let's just knock her down a little bit. I think that looks all right. Now then, she's centered in the middle. For that way, touch. In fact, let's just tilt her back slightly. I 
think she looks all right there. So without moving her too much, I'm gonna sketch round. Now, I'm gonna glue her on to that. And the more fiddly things get, the more shaky my hand gets, unfortunately. But that's something I always seem to have to deal with. I'm gonna take some of that off. Okay. Oh, look at that, sticking it to there. All right, see if I can get it back on that line without sticking myself to it as well. Whoops. Okay, stage one completed successfully. Now then, I'm gonna mark round her with a knife. Got a nice new blade. Got a nice new knife actually, new scalpel. Okay, well I've used a China Graph pencil and a normal pencil just to emphasize the lines. So now I'm gonna see if I can write, route it out. done two passes on this I'm not sure if I've gone deep enough yet but yeah it looks like I'm about two mil deep which I think is probably going to be deep enough I think what I'm going to do now is tidy it all up with a knife and some very small chisels
was interesting. I think I'm now ready to glue her in. Um, I'm going to use some wood glue. Um, I don't really want to use super glue. So uh, let's get that sorted. If I can open the glue that is. I'm going to uh, clamp her down to the bench here because uh, I want her to be really in tight there and uh, well parts of her are sticking out so do the job. Clear up time. Well it's been a pretty eventful day but I've think I've ended up with something that's going to be uh, useful in the future. I've got the fretboard glued up with the inlay. I've got the headstock glued on with its aluminium inlay uh, and I've got the two halves of the body glued back together again. So, I think I'm going to call it a day for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy this series. I mean, my intention with this is really to show you, look, you don't have to be an expert. <laughs> As you can see that I demonstrate every week, but you can get really good results. And you know what? It's really good to uh, build your own guitar. Uh, I mean, I, I just love doing this and Playing your own guitar is, well, that's the bee's knees for me. Anyway, why don't you get your old guitar out and start doing it up? Join me in this quest. Anyway, in the meantime, stay safe and I'll see you soon.